At this point, we're going to be looking at working with masks inside of Flash. Now, masks are really a lot of fun and can be used in any number of different ways, but animated masks are really uh, quite interesting. The basics of working with masks, and as you, as you can see here, what I've done is I've brought in an image, and this is just a picture taken off of Google, an old um, woodcut of Jacques Cartier, and as you can see, our French explorer here, um, has been placed onto this layer. Now, if you remember to bring in an image, you just have to go to File, Import, and you could import it directly to the stage or directly to your library. So now that I've imported this image, and I'm going to come in here, and I'll just give this JC for Jacques Cartier. And as you can see, this JC layer is placed right here. And what I'm going to do is to create a new layer on top of it called the Mask layer. And as you can see, the mask works in this fashion. If I have a mask, anything I produce on that layer is not going to be visible when we actually do implement this mask. But as you can see here, it's got a shape and anything inside that shape will actually show up. Anything outside of that shape will be hidden by the mask. So how do we turn this simple shape into a mask? Well, if you right click on this layer, you can turn that layer into a mask. And let's see what happens. Well, first and foremost, what you'll notice is that both layers are locked. And if you unlock one of the layers, then you'll be able to, you know, work with either the mask shape or work with the picture layer. But in order to see the mask in action, you have to have both layers locked, just as I do right here. And you'll notice that the head of JC was placed inside of the shape or underneath the shape, I should say. So that's why the head shows up. But the rest of his body, everything else, is missing. So that shows you how the basics of the mask work. And you'll notice that the mask layer has a specific icon. The layers that are indeed masked, past tense, are indented, and they show a different icon. But that's not usually enough. As I can show you right now, I'm going to select this object, and we're going to create a motion tween with it. Now, if you remember, part of what you can do with a motion tween, or how to create a motion tween, is to, number one, select the object that you want to motion tween, and convert that object into a symbol. I'm just going to give it M for mask. It's a movie clip. Its registration is right in the middle. So now I have a movie clip in place. Well, let's see. 30 frames per second. If I wanted one second of animation, I'm going to go to the JC layer and I'm going to stretch that out by inserting frames. You'll notice it's all one keyframe. I don't need more than one keyframe here. I don't need two keyframes or anything like that. The picture layer is staying the same the whole way through. However, on the mask layer, we've got one movie clip right here. So what I'm going to do is, well, first and foremost, I think I'll make it a little bit smaller. I'll hold Shift and Alt just to create something that looks a little bit smaller. There you go. And now that it is, in fact, a little bit smaller, well, actually, maybe even a little bit more. There you go. And what I'm going to do with this is to right-click on this layer and say, Create a Motion Tween. This is a new tween, if you remember. And in order to create the new tween, all we really need to do is to now scale the object. Now, look what I've done. I've scaled it, and here I'll put it in outline mode so you can see. I've scaled it so that it shows up larger than the actual shape that we had there to begin with. So what is going to happen in this case, here I'll double click it, actually I'll just single click it, and I'll move it into position, something more like this. And you'll notice that's going to move, grow from that center point. So as we can see, we don't really see that mask doing much of anything, but if we lock both of those layers, now you can see the mask in action. And you've got this nice little radial wipe, just like that. So if I press Control Enter, you can kind of see that we have a mask, and in fact we have a gradient mask, uh, excuse me, a um, circular mask that's growing out from the center, and it's giving you an example of an animated mask in Flash.